Okay guys, you're seeing this because I'm home again. My kid's still sick with the fever, so I'm here. So what you guys have to do in Mold Bio today is complete questions three through seven on that Understanding the Nature of Amino Acids worksheet. So, um, question four is the first one I'm gonna show here. Uh, which solution can serve as a buffer at pH of four? Well, it gives you the pKs of propionic acid, lactic acid, and phosphoric acid, which has two P pK groups, ionizable groups. So what I want you to do is try to find the isoelectric point of C and find out which of those is the best buffer. For number five, for amino acids here, I want to know which one goes furthest to the anode and cathode. But one thing, in an electrolytic cell, the anode actually is where the positive charge is and the cathode is the negative. So what I need you to do is look at those particular amino acids, see how they're charged at a pH of 6, and then indicate which ones go to the positive side, the negative side, and which don't move at all. For question 6, I want you to draw a tripeptide. So you're having three different peptide residues, alanine, leucine, and glycine. Make sure you have the peptide bonds here between alanine and leucine and leucine and glycine. So you're not just drawing three amino acids, they're connected. Here's a hint. You only have one N-terminus on this side and one C-terminus. So remember the NCC backbone. And the last thing you have to do, number seven, it's kind of like what you did yesterday. What's the net charge of glutamic acid at those particular pHs? So remember, glutamic acid does have an R group that can be ionized. So at each of those pHs, I want you to find out whether or not the carboxyl group, amino group, and R group, are they protonated or deprotonated? And this will just go over an example of what we did yesterday. I give you a bunch of problems. Um, this was tyrosine. And I had you draw this at a pH of 1, 5, 7, and 9. So I'm just going to show you the answer to this one here. Um, this will help you do the question 7 on that other worksheet. So at a pH of 1, and I'll draw this here in red just so you guys can see that. I'll get my hands out of the way. Trust me, you'll get there. So at the pH of 1, oh, it's not big enough. Go here so you guys can see it. At a pH of 1. We take a look at the amino group, and that pK is 9.1. So the pH is below that, so this side would be protonated. So all you're doing is it's an amino group, you're protonating it, and there it is. As for the carboxyl group, well, pK is 2.2, and we're still below it. So we're protonated, and we're already protonated, giving this a charge of zero. And finally, now we're looking at the R group of tyrosine, and the pK for this one is 10.07. Well, this would be protonated because the pH is below that, but we're not protonated here. This was shown in the ionized form yesterday. So what you got to do is just protonate it, which means it's no longer negative, no charge. So overall, the, pA, uh, the charge of tyrosine at a pH of 1 is 0. No, I said that wrong. <laughs> Long day, folks. Is one because of this guy here. <laughs> is one. Uh, zero here, zero here. But that one on the side makes it one. And just to give you another answer here, um, I'll show you now what happens here for tyrosine at a different pH. Um, you had to do five, seven, and 12. I'll go up the ladder here. Let's take a look. I'll pick a new color here. Make it blue. No reason. pH five. Well, now the amino group here, if you take a look at it, the pH is still below the pK, so it's protonated. So you put that guy back there. And you have the carboxyl group. Well, now the pH is above that, so it would be deprotonated. So this guy comes off, making him a negative charge. And tyrosine, the pH is below it, it's protonated. So there's the proton. And for this guy here at a pH of 5, we're going to say the charge is, well, plus 1 over here. I should do a plus 1. Plus 1 over here and a minus over there and a neutral over here, giving it, whoop, that's neutral. Okay. So I'm giving the answers here. Um, hopefully it helps a little bit. At a pH of 7, which we're not often going to see, it's at neutral pH. Okay. Amino group, again, pH is below. We protonate it. 
At the carboxyl, the pH is above. It's deprotonated. And look at that. Tyrosine is also protonated. So it's got the same charge as the last one. That's okay. I, I planned for that. I know. This is also... I did it again. This is also neutral. Okay. Plus over here. Minus over here. Neutral over here. And then I got one more I wanted you guys to do. Okay. I wanted you guys to do 12. And I'll choose a nice color here. Pink. All right, so for this one, now we're above on the amino group. So we're deprotonated. We don't get the extra proton. And for the carboxyl group, we're above. We're deprotonated. And even over here, we are deprotonated because the pH of 12 is above the pK. So again, think abstractly. There's not a lot of H's around, so it's deprotonated. And that now gives us, well, we got a no charge here, minus here, minus here, and right away it goes to minus two. So that's how you sh that's how you should have done tyrosine. Notice I did not do glutamic acid. That's what you have to do for question seven. It's really similar to what we did yesterday um, with the worksheet. Where was it? Yep, um, we're doing glutamic acid here. So this one, just put out all four and do your best to try this yourself. Um, hope that helps and. Uh, I should be seeing you on Monday. We'll start Lab 3. Later.